Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, redefined family reunification to include same-sex couples and unmarried partners. The update makes sense in Canada because we value equal rights here and because we do not discriminate against sexual preference. But my next guest says, and he'd written an article about this in the conversation, Hey, we sponsor spouses, so why not friends? Rayanne Dabous is a PhD candidate of U of T. Hi, Rayanne. Hello, how are you? Great. So you heard my intro there. What made you come to the conclusion that the IRCC should allow friends to reunite? Yeah, so um, in my article and in my research, um, I focused on three things the IRCC kind of has as a criteria for their kind of uh, why, the, why they accept, for example, spouses to be sponsored and for us to bring bring them to Canada to, to live with us, right? And uh, so the first is that it's very interesting that in the Canadian government website, it says that we have to give proof that we present ourselves uh, as a couple to the public. So... Uh, so there's sort of kind of an idea of it being socially sanctioned. The second thing uh, was that, uh, and it's interesting, the phrasing here, that it has to be a physical relationship, meaning sexual in some sense. And uh, there's also the word commitment there on that website. And finally, interdependence, that in some way, while well, we share credit cards, we might have our names on the same lease. And I, I thought all these ways of phrasing things was very interesting because not just because in terms of language, and we know how language sometimes can be deceiving uh, when, it com- when it comes to the law, but also that, you know, I found that they weren't so convincing as criteria. Um, so I based myself on two uh, kind of bohemian women from the 19th and early 20th century, uh, George Sands and Lou Andrea Salome. And the reason I went back to them is because usually people who resist change are aversive to it because while well, they think that these demands are new, that they kind of come out of nowhere. And I wanted to show that, no, actually, it's always been the case. There's always been people who don't fit the mold, who kind of had different kinds of lifestyles, and that we can learn from them. And so when, in the case of these two women, um, I mean, I could see, and, and you know, if we read their works and, and follow their lives, we can tell that it's not necessary for, well, it's, and it, here, language fails me. A relation, a relationship, a friendship doesn't need to be, for example, sexual or it doesn't need to be approved by the public. Sometimes, and we know from, for example, LGBTQ history that while well, the public isn't always, you know, the least persecuting party here, right? Um, and even in the question of interdependence, um, Lou Salome, who's a psychoanalyst, she theorized, you know, a theory of positive narcissism, that in fact, independence should be central and not interdependence. And and interdependence can be uh, achieved through independence in some way. So that's sort of the ideas I kind of put in in that article. So, Rayanne, when it comes to immigration, though, don't you think the couple aspect is kind of important? Right. Well, that's the thing. Um, in In the sense that when it's a couple, it's easier to vet. Right, it's easier to follow, um, but you know, if if it's only quantitatively, quantitatively that we're thinking about, right? That well, we don't want everyone to get all their buddies right to Canada or something like that. Uh, that that can be also regulated, right? There's always a way to work things around. Uh, but I'm curious, why do you think a couple is is better? So or, or... a romantic couple that, you know, for example, IRCC asks for evidence that a couple has been mm-hmm. together, that they've demonstrated that they are a couple. Mm-hmm. For me, behind that is the idea of commitment. Friendships break right. up all the time, right? And they also never go through a process akin to a wedding where right. they, you know, they, friendships don't have a cultural ceremony whatsoever to right. state their long-term goals. You could be a fair weather right. friend here for somebody one day and gone the next. Right. Yeah, that's that's indeed, you know, the idea of commitment here is central and uh, great you mentioned it. Um, and commitment is a big word, right? And it's it's some people value commitment, some people less, but in some sense, we all value commitment in one sense or another, right? So I, I showed, for example, these two women, for them, commitment was never about a person, right? It, for them, commitment could be about politics, for example, that was the case of George Sand. For Lou Salome, it was about later on, you know, she found camaraderie in psychoanalysis, for example, that, that there was a mission. So commitment is, is, is relative, right? And 
uh, you're right that commitment is good as a measure, right? The, you know, for immigration, especially that, you know, well, whoever we're bringing in will likely, most likely, you know, stay with that person. Yeah, sponsored. I guess part of commitment, I also mean a responsibility to to take care right. of that person in the event that that was required and that you right. are also responsible for them being in the country. I also think of the fact that practically all my Canadian friends living in England, and I have mm-hmm. several, have at one point or another joked about needing to find someone to marry there to get citizenship. Right. And so I wonder right. how much easier it would be to exploit the system unfairly or, or does that not matter to you well actually it's the other way around right because there's no now system for friends you will have people who will exploit the system arranged for marriages and couples and you know where you can have sham marriages and whatever right but i mean i think what's at stake here is really to measure sincerity right um and sincerity is also difficult right it's as difficult as commitment to measure um, you know, I'm sure in the history of man, right, there's always been friendships that were stronger than than couples. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know any surveys that show that um, relationships are stronger than friendships. For example. Yeah, yeah, you do but, raise a you raise a good point, and the article is an interesting one. So I want to thank you for coming on this morning and talking to us yeah. about it. Of course, thank you. In order to understand why.